Good afternoon, class. We are looking at exam two review covering sections 3.2 to 3.5 from chapter three derivatives. Reminding you of the rise over run different ways of approaching them. When two points are given, you can calculate the slope. In essence, the slope of a blue line or the secant line to find the slope of a tangent line, f prime of a, we take the limit of that expression, one of those expressions, for example, this one as x approaches a, or the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero. And we use the point slope to find the equation of a tangent line. The general differentiation formula as far as definition is concerned, dy dx is limit of delta y over delta x as delta x approaches zero, Leibniz's notation, or f prime of x, is the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches zero. Then we look at some formulas. The derivative of x is one, the derivative of c times f of x, c sits in front, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. The derivative of the difference is the difference of the derivatives. And then we develop formulas from the definition. The derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of k times x is k, where k is a constant. The power rule, the derivative of x to the power of n is n x to the power of n minus one. The derivative of e to the power of x is itself. Sine x is cosine cosine is negative sine x. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Cotangent is minus cosecant squared. Secant is secant x tan x. The derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cotangent x. And according to the chain rule and logarithmic properties, the derivative of e to the power of x, a to the power of x is a to the power of x times ln a. We use shorthand notation to do the product rule and a quotient rule. F G prime is F prime G plus G prime F. F over G prime, use the same thing with the negative in between F prime G minus G prime F over G squared. Composite function, Y is F O G or F of G of X. So Y prime becomes F prime of G of X times G prime of X using the Leibniz's notation dy dx is dy du times du dx and the extended power rule, if you look at this basic power rule, the extended power rule when we want to differentiate g of x to the power of n becomes n g of x to the power of n minus one and times g prime by the chain rule. And uh, we remember that y equals ln x means e to the power of y equals x. And there are some properties of logarithmic functions that will result in the derivative of a to the power of x b itself times ln a. We will look at it later on. We are going to differentiate this. Most of these questions we have seen, some of them are from some practice test, which is posted on the module. So first and foremost, we're gonna write this as two over nine x to the power minus four. Then we are going to write f of prime is two over nine times negative four x to the power of minus four minus one makes it minus five. So you have negative eight over nine and x to the power of negative five goes down, becomes x to the power of positive five. When you have a rational function or a, a fractional format, the very first question is, can I simplify? In this case, if I make up two fractions, the first one becomes 10, the second one becomes minus seven x, and the derivative the derivative is simply minus seven. And there is no need for a quotient rule. 
y equals two to the power of seven x. We want to discuss how we arrive at the answer. We know that the derivative of e to the power of x is itself. e to the power of kx is itself times k. e to the power of g of x is itself times g prime by the uh, chain rule. What happens when the base is different? We have developed this. So let's quickly see that, reminding everybody that ln of e to the power of x is x, e to the power of ln x is x. Therefore, we can replace the b according to this with e to the power of ln b. And so when we do that, it becomes e to the power of ln b times x. And this, basically, we can differentiate using either this one or the second one, the next one, which is, in essence, using the chain rule. So the answer is itself times ln b. And we're going to return it back to b to the power of x. So the derivative is itself times ln b. What if we have b to the power of f of x? So we follow the same thing. So the same thing, b to the, b to the power of f of x. ln b by the logarithmic properties. And f prime of x by the chain rule. Therefore, here the answer is itself, 2 to the power of 7x. times ln two by the properties of logs, and finally times seven by the chain rule, and we rewrite that as seven ln two times two to the power of seven x. We did this with sine, so we're going to repeat that with cosine. First of all, I'm going to remind you the derivative of cosine is negative sine. If it's cosine of u, you can say minus sine u d u dx because it's a chain rule and u is a function of x. Or we may use cosine of g of x instead of u, which is minus sine of g of x times g prime of x. To me, when I want to do that, I'm going to read it as cosine and I'm going to pause. Therefore, the answer is minus sign, as I've mentioned it before. Then I need to write an argument for this. So I use the same argument. Then I need its derivative by the chain rule, which is true, and I'm going to rewrite. y equals cosine squared of x. It's a good practice to rewrite it. You don't have to if you know exactly what that is, but if you have any doubts, rewrite it, and then use the extended power rule two times cosine x to the power of two minus one by the chain rule we need the derivative of inside or cosine, which is negative sine x. We put them all together as negative two cosine x sine x or negative two sine x cosine x. And you may recognize this as sine of two x, the sine of double x. For the third one again, I'm going to read cosine and I'm going to pause. Therefore, the answer is minus sine. Every sinusoidal function requires an argument. So we use the same argument, x squared. And times the derivative of the argument 2x. And we rewrite this as minus 2x sine x squared. y equals sine squared of 8x. To differentiate this, we are going to write it as sine of 8x to the second power. We are going to use the extended power rule. So 2 sits in front times sine 8x to the power of 1 
So y prime is two sine eight x. Then we need the derivative of sine of eight x. This part. What is the derivative of sine? So perhaps to do that again, we just write sine gives you cosine of eight x. And then the argument, its derivative is eight. We rewrite this as a 16 sine of eight x times cosine of eight x. f of x is 3x times 3 to the power of x. We are going to differentiate this using the product rule. Therefore, I'm going to call this the f function, call this the g function, so we can move on. So we need f prime g plus g prime f. f prime is simply 3 times g, which is 3 to the power of x, plus g prime. So take the derivative of 3 to the power of x. It's an exponential function. The answer is itself. The base is not e times ln 3. And then we need f. 3x. So I'm going to write this as f prime g plus g prime f. So it becomes clear as to what we are dealing with, everybody. We are done with calculus. We are going to find a common factor and simplify this. To do this, I'm going to write three to the power of one. So this becomes three to the power of x plus one by the exponential rule. a to the power of m times a to the power of n is a to the power of m plus n. And the same thing here, this one has exponent 1, so this 2 can combine into 3 to the power of x plus 1. The rest of them remain, ln 3 and x remain. And finally, this is a common factor. If I take this out, this gives me one and this gives me this two, which we are going to write as x ln three. Mixed derivative practice, this is the what you can find under the modules. I have picked some of the questions from our lecture, some of them from the mixed derivative practice. You can find it under the module for this exam, and I hope you have a practice with that. So here's question 14 of that. So we're going to put a raised dot to make this a product rule. We are going to use the product rule. We're going to call this f times g, you're using the product rule. So you need f prime g plus g prime f. So f prime is 4x cubed times g, the function is e to the power of 2x. 
plus g prime e to the power of 2x, the answer is e to the power of 2x uh, times the derivative of 2x, which is a 2, times f, uh, which is x to the power of 4. Uh, we are done with calculus. We are going to take a common factor out. Notice between 4 and 2, 2 is in common. Between x cubed and x to the power of 4, x cubed is in common. And e to the power of 2x, both of them have it. So 2x cubed with the e to the power of 2x is a common factor, everybody. So when we take a common factor of 2x cubed e to the power of 2x, we have to divide this one by this one. And as you can see, the division will, will result in 2 here. If you, re, if you divide the second piece by this one, results in x. So we have 2x cubed e to the power of 2x times 2 plus x as the final answer. What about this function 9x times x minus 1 to the power of 4? We put a raised dot in between. And again, we are going to follow the product rule fg. So we need f prime, which is 9, times g, which is x minus 1 to the power of 4, plus g prime. The derivative of this piece is 4 times x minus 1 cubed times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 times f, which is 9x. So if we were to write something here, we would write this is f prime g plus g prime f. And obviously number nine is in common. So is x minus one. This has exponent four, this has exponent three. So we go with exponent three. When we divide this one by this one results in x minus one. When we divide this one by this one, we are left with four as well as x. So it gives us four x. So we get nine times x minus one cubed times the brackets x minus one plus four x. These two combine into 5x. So the final answer of 9 times x minus 1 cubed times 5x minus 1. This is also a question from this area, number 21. And to differentiate this, we are going to use the extended power rule or the chain rule in conjunction with the quotient rule. So to differentiate this, number three sits in front. And then we write whatever is inside to the power of n minus one. So the same thing to the power of two. And finally, we need the derivative of the inside, and I'm going to call this f over g using the quotient rule. A big fraction bar, we need f prime, which is 4, times g, which is 2x minus 9, minus g prime, which is 2, times f, which is 4x. Just write the bottom, 2x minus 9, in a parenthesis and a square. And of course, we are done with calculus. We are going to use our algebraic techniques to finish the job. We distribute the 4, we get 8x minus 36 minus 8x, 8x, and minus 8x cancel each other. Now we're going to write a big fraction bar. What is in the numerator? Number 3 is in the numerator. This 1 to the power of 2 is in the numerator. 
minus 36 that's in the numerator what is in the denominator 2x minus 9 to the power of 2 and also this one which is 2x minus 9 to the power of 2 so combining these two that means product of the two gives you 2x minus 9 to the power of 2 plus 2 or 4 so again 3 is in the numerator 4x quantity squared so it's minus 36 the bottom is 2x minus 9 squared here squared here that gives you exponent 4 and now we will change this into 16x squared. Then we're going to multiply 3 by 16 by negative 36. Whatever we get times x squared. We get minus 1728x squared over 2x minus 9 to the power of 4. Please understand the negative sign remains it's not going anywhere here's another example from that page f of x is cosine of 5t over 5t we need to use the quotient rule and i'm going to call this f over g so I need f prime g minus g prime f over g squared. So what is the derivative of cosine negative sine? So negative sine of the same argument, 5t. And then by the chain rule, I need the derivative of 5t times 5. By the quotient rule, f prime g times 5t minus g prime that gives you minus 5 times f cosine of 5t and then you write the bottom and square it results in 25t squared everybody we're done with calculus we notice we can take the common factor of negative 5 out so if I take the negative 5 out from here, I'm left with 5t sine 5t. Over here, this is gone. I have cosine 5t. So we are just factoring, which means now, first, I want to make sure that we understand this is f prime g minus g prime f and this 5 cancels out this 25 and we get the final answer minus what's in the parentheses 5t sine of 5t plus cosine 5t and 25t squared goes to 5t squared because we drop the common factor of 5. y equals 2x squared plus 9x plus 9 over x plus 3. Anytime you want to uh, deal with the rational function in any format in math. You want to put it in lowest term if you can, whether it's a fractional format or more specifically a rational function. Uh, in order to differentiate this, if you can't simplify it, you have to use the quotient rule. So you're going to try to see if you can simplify it. Simplification is not that difficult because if it can be factored, first of all, this is a prime number, so you have no choice to go with x and 2x. Secondly, this number 9 has two choices of uh, factoring, 3 times 3 or 1 times 9. Now, it's important to know, even if I can factor the numerator, but it doesn't have a factor of x plus 3, it doesn't do me any good, it doesn't simplify, and I must use the quotient rule. So I'm hoping to have this one. So that actually helps to remember that. So if you plug in plus three, it works, and this must be three. What you must check is that the product of these two six x and the product of these two three x, they must add up to nine x, and they do. So everything works out. You drop the common factor of x plus 3. The answer is 2x plus 3 
and the derivative is simply true. There is no need to use a quotient rule. So again, in general, if you don't have to use a quotient rule and you don't recognize it, you probably make a mistake because you make it more difficult. But if you have to use it, such as this case, then follow the formula and use the quotient rule. Uh, this is from one of the homework questions in that uh, paperwork that was posted. The growth in world population in millions is estimated by the formula P of T is 3100 e to the power of 0 0.01660, where T is the number of years since 1960. Find the instantaneous rate of change for the year 2015, include units. Uh, two pieces of information. Anytime you do word problem, you must include units. If units are given, you have to include units. Number two, even if they don't mention instantaneous rate of change, because there is one point in time, namely year 2015, it is the differentiation or instantaneous rate. So we want P prime of T. We start with 3,100. Then it's an exponential. We write it just the way it is, just the way it is. And then E to the power of KX is KE to the power of KX. So we need the coefficient of T, 0 0.0166. Practically, we are done with calculus. We are going to multiply these two numbers. From 1960 to 2015, there is a difference of 55, and that's what you want to plug in because it's the derivative in general. But specifically for the year 2015, you must replace this with number 55. Multiply these two, raise the e to that power, multiply it by 51.46, and you get this number. This is just using a calculator units please understand p prime means dp dt which is the change in p population over the change in time population million people and time year so 128.2273 million people per year what does it mean in 2015, the world population was increasing. Why increasing? Because this is positive. At the rate of this. Now, I'm going to change this so it becomes clear. It's 128,227,300 people per year. You may have more decimals and you just change this number. Uh, this is an approximation, by the way. The length of a growing Tasmanian devil is estimated by the function L of W is 2.265 W to the power of 2.543, where W is in kilograms and L is in millimeters. Its weight can be estimated by W of T is 0 0.125 plus 0 0.18 T, where T is its age in weeks how fast is the length of a 30-week-old Tasmanian devil changing? The length is changing with respect to time, so we want the LVT. Using the Leibniz's notation, dy dt is dy du du dt, and u is the intermediate variable. So we are going to write it in this fashion. And then L going to t the intermediate variable is w so we need the dw in between dl dw take the derivative of this piece which is this number times the exponent times w to the power of the same exponent minus one so 2.265 times 2.543, w to the power of 2.543 minus 1, or 1.543. What about dw dt? Just 0.18. B 
we are going to rewrite this by multiplying these three numbers. You can leave it as that and calculate the W, or you can replace the W with this function 0 0.125 plus 0.80. It makes it a function of T. So it's easier perhaps to calculate the weight when it's 30, week old, so replace the T with 30. That results in the weight of 5.525 kilograms. And now replace it here. Use a calculator. And you get 14.4912. The LDT, the change in length in millimeters over the change in time in weeks, units are extremely important. Or with the second method, we can find L as a function of T. This is fairly easy. Change the W to this. And now you have 2.265 times the parentheses 0 0.125 plus 0 0.18 T to the power of 2.543. And all you have to do find the LDT or L prime of T using the extended power rule. So if I want to differentiate this, I get this one times the same thing to the power of 2.543 minus one. So this times this times this one to the power of the same thing times minus one and then times the derivative of the inside, which is 0.18, if I multiply the three numbers, I get this one. And notice these two are identical. This is a function of W. If we changed it, we would get the same thing here. Uh, we are done here just in case they didn't ask for the length. If they did, into this formula, the weight, is 5.525 and you calculate the length again. This was an ask in case if they did. The graph of a function f is given in the figure, use it to sketch the graph of derivative f prime, reminding you of a couple of important things, peaks and valleys, local extrema, relative max and mean, F prime is zero. When F prime is positive, F is increasing. When it's negative, it's decreasing. Therefore, peaks and valleys A, B, C clearly correspond to F prime, having the same X coordinates, but Y is zero. I want to explain this point. They picked up a couple of points on a, a tangent line. They calculated. So this will correspond to five comma three halves or 1.5. Notice the function is decreasing here and here, increasing here and here. So if we were to graph it, again, A corresponds to the same X coordinate, but Y coordinate is zero. B, same X coordinate, the Y coordinate is zero. C, the same X coordinate, Y coordinate is zero. So this is negative. So it's below the x-axis, okay, because f prime is zero, f is decreasing. The same thing here, f is decreasing, f prime is negative, so below the x-axis, but has to come back up at c, because at c, m is zero. Over here, it's increasing, so it goes up above the x-axis, but it has to come back down because again, at B, it's zero. And then this portion is increasing, so it goes up. And of course, this is a better graph. I'm gonna clear mine so you can easily see what's going on. A corresponds to zero, B corresponds to zero. C corresponds to zero to the left of A below the x-axis. 
between A and B above, but it has to go back to zero. Between B and C below the x-axis has to come back to zero. This is obviously positive because it's increasing. And this point corresponds to five comma three halves or 1.5 as mentioned before. The graph of a function f is given, use it to sketch the graph of the derivative f prime. So first, let's remind everybody, a function fails to be differentiable if it has a sharp corner. Where would you put the tangent line? How would you draw a tangent line? Discontinuity, same thing. And a vertical tangent line, as you recall, vertical lines have slopes. We learned in elementary algebra that are undefined, but in essence, they go to negative or positive infinity. So what happens here, we are dealing with one, two, three, four line segments. So for each piece, we can calculate the slope, assuming those are the end points. We can calculate the slope using rise over run. Therefore, for this piece would be zero minus one, over minus one minus minus three, which results in m being negative one half. Then the m for this one would be positive one half. For this one, you can calculate it as a positive one, and this one is negative one. Therefore, if we were to look at just the first one, just this piece, because the slope is negative one half for this one, the line which is a horizontal line. What is the equation? Y equals negative one half. So you would draw a line, which is a horizontal line, Y equals negative one half. However, uh, we don't know if it continues here, so we stop here. And at this point, we have a sharp corner and this results in a hole, okay? This results in a hole, this results in a hole. And let's take a look at each case. This one, y equals one, but it's gonna go from here to here, only this portion and the endpoints have holes. This one, the line y equals negative one, but it's gonna go from here to here. And again, we have holes at the endpoints. And finally, this one goes from here. So this, this has the equation, one half so this would be the line one half but it's going to go from here with a hole and stops here 